I, when I discovered that I wanted to <laughs> pursue music, I was like, what can I do though at nine years old in Wisconsin to yeah. pursue a music career? And I saw I, the national anthem. I was like, oh, I could learn the national anthem. I could start with that. So I learned the national anthem, and by six months later, I ended up singing it like Dodgers, Lakers, Packers, Clippers, um, like a hundred national anthems. Uh, my acting manager sent me out for an audition, and I went, um, and it was like a pretty small role, but it was so fun because I got to sing in it. Um, I, I got to play like a mean girl, which was fun because I'm like not. <laughs> so it was really fun to do like the complete opposite, you know, of who mm -hmm. I am. It was right before the movie was about to come out. They were looking for, um, I usually write on my own music, but mm -hmm. I've always wanted to work with them or sing a song of, you know, that they've collaborated on. Mm -hmm. And uh, the creators of the movie and the soundtrack, they were like, hey, do you want to give it a try? They think your voice would be great on it. And I was like, oh, yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. So I did, and I sang it, and they were like, were you, like you get it. Like, you were putting oh it in the movie. And I was like, oh, oh my god. I was so excited. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, this is Lauren Engel. Today I'm here with Skylar Stecker. Hi. <laughs> So you were born in Wisconsin, yes, or? Yes, I was born in, well, no, actually, no. Was it Tampa? I, I, yes. Okay, I looked yes. it up, and I was like confused. I was like, which one should I ask you? Yes, okay, no, Tampa, Tampa. I was born in Tampa, but I lived in Wisconsin for three years from, I think, around like eight years old until, I don't know, where it was like in that period of time. So I always like consider like I grew up though in Wisconsin because I remember it the best because I was like more aware. Mm. Um, but no, I was born in Tampa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but, are your yeah, parents okay. originally from? <laughs> My parents yeah. are from Wisconsin. Oh. Yeah, so I was going to say, they're from Wisconsin, so for vacations or for anything, we always go back to Wisconsin oh. for the holidays since both my parents' families. Are yeah. There. Mm -hmm. So what was in Tampa for you guys? Um, what was that? What was in Tampa for you guys? Too? Oh no! Yeah. I mean, my dad played football, oh, okay. so he played football for the Bucks out in um, Tampa, and I was born there because I think he his last year he played was the year I was born and then he went and played for the Saints and then we moved to Louisiana so we've kind of been all over the place yeah yeah did you have also an athletic upbringing as well like with your dad's like background? you know I actually I'm so not athletic like I'm the most <laughs> unathletic person you will ever meet but my brother is super athletic and he's 11 and he's like total opposite of me like wants to play sports all the time like super athletically talented and I like I no I can't even walk half the time I like fall over a trip <laughs> <laughs> did you realize like who kind of your dad was though like with their classmates or like always being in like the media eye? um sometimes I mean yeah. I was so young though that I feel like Nobody like really cared. We only cared about like silly bands and like <laughs> like like little kid stuff. So I mean, not really. But I just am so proud. I mean, I'm so grateful to also have. I mean, because we're we're both we both are in the entertainment industry yeah. in some sort. So he has a lot of great advice, um, just about just just life things too, and just with my career and um, his perspective on like things he's gone through that he's learned from. So um, he's definitely you know I'm really grateful. That he's gone through those experiences too because it's, yeah. you know, helped me out through a lot of stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, we kind of bond on that. Yeah. So, yeah. And also your grandfather is a really talented businessman, right? I was like reading up. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On Forbes. I mean, yeah. I'm just, my family has always instilled with me since I was really young that, like, hard with hard work and dreams. Yeah. Like, you can do whatever you put your mind yeah. to. Yeah. Um, and so everything that I've done has been a hundred percent just based off of my determination and my want for it Like my family's always like, you know, like if you want it, well then go get it Like, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so, um, I, which I've loved because it's built so much character and just like self-responsibility Just since even since I was little even before I started music like with anything it was like all right Well, you want to do gymnastics? We'll go find a place and like show us, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so very I'm very hands-on with everything so I'm very lucky to been have been surrounded by people that have had big goals and have worked really hard to accomplish. Mm -hmm. It's really inspiring, you know, to look up to, you know, people like that. Yeah, has that side of your family given you any business advice with like um, music or? For sure, I mean, just growing up around that has just, I feel like just absorbing that subconsciously, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but for sure my mom too is like, she'll always say like, no, I don't know anything about music, but we've learned together, but she's so smart business-wise just from mm -hmm. growing up around a business. Yeah. Um, and she's just, I think she just, I mean, she definitely helps me out with a ton of that kind of stuff. And she's super, per like, she's super aware of people and their inner, like, what they're thinking. And she's just very, she has a communications major, so she's very like, helps me out with that because I'm so like 
in like the moment like music you know mm -hmm. and she's so like okay well this person was thinking this and so she's really great at all that and I think we make a good tag team yeah with my I love music. that yeah we complement each other's weaknesses or whatever we have oh what is that what's that saying it's like I have this like I have the strength that she doesn't have and then she oh, has the strength yeah. that you know what I'm yeah. saying yeah so together we make the perfect team <laughs> <laughs> when you were growing up, was she working any other jobs or was she just kind of like at home? Well, she's gonna like kill me for saying this, but she actually worked on the Jerry Springer show oh, a long time so ago, cool. yeah, when wow. she was pregnant with me. And then she also, um, then she went from that to working on for charity. So like the complete opposite yeah. of the Jerry Springer show. <laughs> um, so she did a lot of charity work um, for Kids Wish Network and then also for a charity that I'm still involved with today called Wheelchairs for Kids. Mm. Um, so she's done a lot of really cool stuff but she loves to give back and I love to give back and that's one of the main things I you know I love to do like in my free time is I'm involved with like PETA for animal rights um, I'm vegan and I love wheelchairs for kids um, I just feel like children and animals are kind of like my main two passions mm -hmm. um, and we kind of share the same passions too which is great that she kind of had a background in that as her job so yeah, yeah. I love that so when you were growing up, were you a vegetarian and then now you're a vegan? Yes, or? I was. I've been vegetarian since I was eight and vegan for the past four, oh. three years. Yeah. Is that your whole family's vegetarian? Or? My whole family's vegan now. Whoa. It's a, it was one at a time. So it was my, me and my mom did it first. Um, and then my dad, and then my brother actually, and then my dad joined in last. Whoa. Yeah. But even growing up, so... Initially, they were all vegetarian. No, they were. My mom has been vegetarian since she was 13. Mm -hmm. And my dad and my brother and all of us ate meat until until I was eight, until, and then yeah. them recently. What, what made you want to become vegan? Just animal rights. Yeah. Um, just the way that they're treated it just makes me really sad. And, um, you know, there's, it's it's so easy to not yeah. have them in your diet. Especially if you have a whole family and you guys all cook together. Exactly. Like you think yeah, and you do your point. research and just kind of become aware I just feel like it's it's so easy and people always ask me like it must be so hard but once you get the hang of it it's super easy and um, you know I just I it's such a great I just feel better too being vegan too so there's no downsides to it so I always am like encouraging people to go vegan because not only are you helping your overall health but you're also helping you know save animals lives so mm -hmm. yeah I love that um, yeah how do you describe your personality back then growing up mine yeah I was, I'm actually kind of a shy person, and I know I don't seem like it, but it just that, like, with music, I'm not shy at all, like, yeah. at all. Like, I, I just love it. I feel so comfortable, but when it's just with normal things, like, I'll get, like, nervous, like, in small group settings or whatever, like, I'll get, like, more anxiety than I would performing in front of, like, hundreds yeah. of thousands of people, like, the, so, um, it's weird, so I'm a little bit shy. I also, I mean... I talk a lot though like I'm shy but I talk a lot like when you get me started like I won't shut up um, and I've been like that since I was little too mm -hmm. um, and then also very independent too I've always kind of been a little bit of a loner um, which is yeah, a couple of dogs girl. <laughs> I actually know I'm usually not scared of dogs but I actually got attacked by like a dog almost no. yeah like a couple months ago That's so scary. like I'm still kind of like <laughs> Otherwise, I like love dogs, so it makes me sad that one turned on me and like it was a golden doodle too. Yeah. It was the weirdest thing because golden doodles are like super friendly most yeah. of the time. Like soup, I have a golden doodle. Actually, this question just clicked to me. But do you have mixed race parents or? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Um, I know everyone always like is kind of curious on what I am because I, some people think I'm like Latina. Yeah. Um, no one really ever like can put their finger on it. But yeah, my dad is black and my mom's white. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, because actually, I mean, I'm also half-half, but I was wondering if that's that, awesome. like, and I asked a lot of people who are mixed race, but has that ever been, like, an identity issue for you growing up, or not really a big part yeah, of Yeah, I mean, too? I mean, no, I grew up in so many, I feel like it's been, it's been great, because yeah. I've lived in so many different places, grew up with so many different cultures, um, just a lot from going from uh, Florida to the New Orleans to then Wisconsin yeah. to, to then now here which is like a big melting pot of mm -hmm. it all um, it's really great and I feel like too my musical taste of the pop R&B that I you know my genre that I sing is like very um, accurate to how I grew up and like music I listened to like mm -hmm. on my mom's side more so I had like she was listening to like Madonna and like Backstreet Boys and like stuff like that and my dad was listening to like Jodeci and like uh, New Edition and Donny Hathaway so I kind of you know grew up listening to a mix of music and then I feel like subconsciously that's kind of where I got my pop R&B like mix from later on when I discovered 
my voice mm-hmm. and my love for music. And were you like five when you started playing piano? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was five when I started playing piano. My mom signed me up because it's supposed to help with math. Oh. So it wasn't even for music reasons. <laughs> but then I just fell in love with it. Um, and then I started singing when I was nine. Yeah. So with that, what you said, it, like it was a talent show or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I signed myself up for a talent show to play Not, the piano. Like for your school? Or? Yes, for my school yeah. when I was in third grade. And the music teacher was like, "No, I don't want you to play piano. I want you to sing." And I was like, "Ah, uh, don't sing." So I sang for her though anyway. Yeah. And then I found out I got in for the singing. And then oh I was my just gosh. my mind was like, "What?" Because no one in my family does anything musical. Yeah. And I just automatically assumed I was going to be bad. <laughs> and then I ended up singing in the talent show, and I just fell in love with it. And I was like, "This is what I'm doing." Yeah. So. It was a very weird situation, but I'm so, without it, without the music teacher telling me to sing, it, rather than play piano, I, I probably wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be here today where I am well, right now, which is crazy. Yeah. One person saying one commentary in third grade, which you would think would be like nothing, but no, yeah. it changed my whole life. And you also picked up other instruments. Yeah, I play drums, I play guitar, and I play piano. Yeah. So what, what, at what ages did you start learning those? I, well, piano when I was five, guitar. Probably around maybe 10, 11? 11, probably 11. And mm-hmm. then g- drums I started last year. Oh. So, fairly recently, so. Yeah. At what age did you start singing the national anthem? I guess I was like, because I was wondering the connection. It was like, because your dad was always yeah, yeah, in that yeah. environment. So. Well, I started, well, that was actually the first song I ever learned was the national anthem. Um, I When I discovered that I wanted to <laughs> pursue music, I was like, what can I do, though, at nine years old in Wisconsin to yeah. pursue a music career? And I saw I the national anthem. I was like, oh, I could learn the national anthem. I could start with that. So I learned the national anthem, and by six months later, I ended up singing it like Dodgers, Lakers, Packers, Clippers. Um, um, like a hundred national anthems, which was awesome. So that's kind of how I got my start, was mm-hmm. just with national anthems and um, just kind of brainstorming yeah. ways to be a musician. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But did it click to you? Did you ever have stage fright? I guess you were so young, maybe you didn't um, realize. No, then. I actually more so have stage fright like now with national anthems than I did before. Like I oh. never got nervous, and then I feel like as I get. Not with my concerts and stuff, I like never get nervous, but with like national anthems, I think as I get older, I like, I realize the importance of that song, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like, it's the national anthem, so I feel like I get in my head like a little bit, but I, but I think when I get on the stage, I don't get nervous anymore. It's like only like leading up to it because I want to do well, because I'm such a perfectionist. But um, when I'm on stage though, then I like, my mind goes blank and then I'm just like, oh, say, <laughs> and then it all goes away. And I just, and I sing and I yeah. just let it out. <laughs> Actually, with you having an interest in music so young, did it ever did it ever occur to you to join American Idol? Because like, people um, never... yeah, they were actually I, I got um, reached out to by some of those TV shows, um, but I don't know. I just never. I, I was already like writing my own music and doing mm. all of that, so I was just really focused on developing myself as an artist and like putting out my own music. Yeah. Um, then taking time away to film a show or like be on a show um, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense yeah. um, but no those are great I still watch them they're really fun to watch <laughs> <laughs> and how are you doing music on school like were you homeschooled or I'm homeschooled now yeah. when I first moved out to California um, I wasn't homeschooled um, when I came out here when I was nine um, your whole family moved or mm-hmm. we oh, moved wow. like after I proved myself that I was you know really passionate like oh. it wasn't just like karate for a, a week or whatever it was like I was really determined and so um, after doing all those national anthems, my parents were like, all right, we'll come out and give it a try. So Whoa, so they all moved for you. That's so cool. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and the weather is amazing here. Yeah. Like, it's incredible. So it's also beca- mainly because of the weather and then also because it's, you know, convenient for my music. Yeah. Um, and we also knew, knew, too, that we, like, wanted to go somewhere warm because we're in Wisconsin and it's yeah. so cold in the winters and so hot in the summers. Um, so I knew my parents really wanted to go somewhere where it was kind of consistently warm all year round. So mm-hmm. it's either here or Florida. And I discovered my love for music and then it was like, all right, well, there's our decision. We're going to California. Yeah. Um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> I totally <laughs> got off track. No, that's perfect. <laughs> so I guess your family was so supportive of you just doing music. They didn't really mind if you didn't go to college or anything. Yeah, or... no. I mean, what I do, I have, it's like a job, right? Yeah. And people go to college for, you know, to get more educated and find the field of job that they, mm-hmm. uh, career path that they want to go on. And so for me, I've already found that career path and I've already, like, have a job yeah. and I love doing what I do and so um, there's no need for me to go to college mm-hmm. um, but I mean but college is like 
great. I mean, I my friend actually, shout out to Jackson if he's watching this, <laughs> but he just, it's so weird, because I, I remember we met when I was nine, when I first moved out here, mm -hmm. and we've been friends ever since, and he just went off to college, and it's so weird, because I'm like, oh my god, I'm at that age where if I already wasn't doing music, like, mm -hmm. I'd be going to college, like, that's just, like, freaky, like, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's like, weird, I'm like, oh my god, I'm almost an adult. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and where was your career at by the time you moved here? Like, where are you putting original music? Where are you I was doing tree? covers, I was... Was, um, I was doing covers. I was releasing. I released my first EP when I first moved out here, like a couple months after I moved oh, out. Oh, so here. you already had a management team and everyone? No, I didn't. Actually, no, I didn't. I was actually I was talking to um, management and uh, people, just like just organically, you know, like people kind of hearing my voice around on the mm -hmm. internet and whatnot. And then when I, we moved out here, that's when we started like you know meeting with people and people were like, oh, you're here. Let's you know get together. Yeah. So that's when I found my label and. Um, my management then but then recently I decided to part ways and to be independent and kind of start over a little bit when it comes to the team behind the scenes which has been really confusing and sad but also like mm -hmm. super exciting at the same time um, so like new beginnings right yeah. so I'm really looking forward to the future what did you learn from previously being signed um a lot <laughs> <laughs> I definitely learned a lot um, I feel like the number one thing I learned was like about myself was I mean, I always knew, like, I always had a vision for who I was, but, and, like, where I wanted to go, and I think I just learned how much more, like, I really do, um, being in that situation, you know, with so many people and different opinions, and, um, you know, and just being around that, I mean, it definitely just grew as a person, and how to be more independently, like, yeah. stating how I feel and not being afraid to, like, speak my mind, um, especially just coming in here and coming out to California and then being signed a couple, like, a year or two years after being out here and in the industry, like, I always, I entrusted a lot in people, mm -hmm. like, right off the bat because I was like, yeah, you know more than I do, like, even though I have my vision, like, this is what I want, but, like, I trust what you're saying and I feel like, too, you have to, I've definitely learned to be more careful about mm -hmm. <laughs> what people say and to, you know, put myself and my inner feelings, I guess, first more so, like, my, like listen to my gut more instead of pushing it off and, you know, be, like, maybe believing somebody right off the bat, Is that, yeah. if that makes sense. So I learned mm -hmm. a lot more about myself and how to just deal with life better in the future. Mm -hmm. And how did you meet your team now? Well, my team now, I still am independent. I still haven't found the right fit for management because I'm just so, like, has to, my gut has to feel it like with mm -hmm. people that are around me and that's why like my marketing and cobalt my publisher and um just people like that i just knew from the minute i met them like this is the right fit like mm -hmm. i felt it in my soul um and i listened to my gut and i feel like with all the things i haven't listened to my gut in the past before like that's when it didn't necessarily work out for me in the yeah. best way um How so i feel like with management or if i if, if I have a, like, a manager in the near future or when I eventually sign with a label again, I just, I want to make sure that it's the right fit. I really want people that are passionate about like me like I am and that like I believe what they're saying, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? How did you meet Cobalt and when? Them. I met Cobalt when I was 11, right, after, right around the time I released my first EP. Wow. Um, and I think I was the youngest person to sign an admin deal with them, yeah. which was cool because I write all my own music. Mm -hmm. So um, they're great, and I, I love Amanda over there, and who is my girl, <laughs> and Jeanette, and everyone over there. The whole team is amazing, and mm -hmm. they've been supportive of me since literally day one. So um, they're great. So is it mostly your mom like helping you now? Yeah, yeah. it's me. Mom in charge. <laughs> no, I know me, my mom, uh, obviously my dad, my family, mm -hmm. um, all super supportive. Obviously Cobalt and Black Box, my marketing and. Um, you know, all of the, sure, my PR, all of them have been like super helpful with everything. Obviously being independent is independent, so a lot of, I, I do the majority of a lot yeah. of the grinding and, you know, I set up all the producer deals and I figure all that out and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm kind of my own manager and label as well as crazy. creator and artist yeah. and everything. So you found all the producers yourself or how did you meet yeah, them? Yeah, through, through Cobalt, a lot oh, of them okay. um, through just, and also just being in the industry for seven over seven years now mm -hmm. um just getting relationships and just meeting people at random things like um i mean this writer i've been working with a ton her name's avina savage and she's amazing and uh she was connected through someone that i met and then she was like oh you need to like meet my friend avina and then i met her and it was just like it was just awesome like hey meet people at like you don't yeah. even expect it it's not like a formal like oh you're having a session with her today it's just we met and then we hit it off and then 
we started writing together and she's just she's amazing and we she wrote I think four or five songs off my album oh, with me. Uh -oh. Yeah, so she did a lot and I mean, I have so many sessions set up <laughs> coming up with her. I think she's doing like every one with me so far. Oh my gosh. So yeah, she's just, you know, you meet those people that you just, you get each other, you mm -hmm. connect and you have to hold on to those people because, you know, they're special and they don't come around that often. Mm -hmm. So I love working with her. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. Early on, how did you meet the people at Disney? I'm sorry, I ran into you. I was looking at the cute cat that was <laughs> What was that? Sorry. Oh, early on, how did you meet the people at Disney? Because you did a bunch of Oh, yeah, I did a couple. I did some acting early yeah. on in my career. Did you like that? Um, I did like it. It was yeah. definitely a different experience than music because with music, you have like... 100% of the control and everything where with acting you're portraying somebody else like a different character mm -hmm. um, and having to kind of get outside your own mindset and vision yeah. and like become that other person which is was definitely a challenge for me especially being so like like with my music and everything is so like in oh, tune yeah. to who I am to have to like switch it into like you know uh, mm -hmm. channel somebody else's like how I think this character would be in this situation mm -hmm. so it was definitely really fun though I had such a fun time um, and you know I, I I mean, music's my number one priority, 100% always. Mm -hmm. But um, if, I, if the right project or something I was really excited about came up, I would totally be open to maybe acting in something like that. But music's first, though. Yeah. <laughs> but it was super fun, yeah. How did the super fun night with Rebel Wilson come about? <laughs> that was awesome. It was so fun. Um, I loved her because it was right around the time, right after Pitch Perfect. Oh. And she's amazing and hilarious and just awesome. And she had her own TV show called Super Fun Night. And uh, my acting manager sent me out for an audition and I went. Um, and it was like a pretty small role, but it was so fun because I got to sing in it. Um, I, I got to play like a mean girl, which was fun because I'm like not. <laughs> so it was really fun to do like the complete opposite, you know, of who mm -hmm. I am. Um, it was really fun. I got to sing on, you know, combine those two things together, like my mm -hmm. music with acting. So it was really fun. And she was super sweet and great and hilarious. And it was a really fun experience. Mm -hmm. How did you meet Julia Michaels? I, so she wrote my song, How Did We, yeah. uh, which was featured in the movie Everything Everything. And um, her and Justin Tranter wrote that song. And um, when the movie was right before the movie was about to come out, they were looking for, um, I usually write on my own music, but mm -hmm. I've always wanted to work with them or sing a song of, you know, that they've collaborated on. Mm -hmm. And uh, the creators of the movie and the soundtrack, they were like, hey, do you want to give it a try? They think your voice should be great on it. And I was like, oh, yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. So I did, and I sang it, and they were like, we're, like you get it. Like, we're putting oh it in a movie. And I was like, oh, oh my god. I was so excited. Yeah. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> when, when did they first show you, um, have you sing on the song? Like, how long ago was um, it? Ooh, a couple years ago. It was, oh, so this was before her artist project. Uh, no, it was right after it. Oh. Like, right after, like, right after Issues came out. Oh, my god. Yeah, so, That's so funny. I know. So it was awesome. It was a great experience, and they're so talented. Um, and I'm really grateful that I got to, you know, sing their work, which was mm -hmm. really fun. What are the inspirations for your album and music videos? Um, just, like, honestly, my life. Like, this past <laughs> year, like, all the experiences and everything, like, I really tapped into my vulnerable side, mm -hmm. which I haven't really done before, and that was really important for me to do with this album. Um, and also, too, like, a self-confidence I gained from going through all of that. It was mm -hmm. like going through the storm to then have the rainbow at the end, you know? Yeah. And I feel like you hear that with the music. Um, and I really want to inspire other people with my music and with this album that, you know, while they're, if they're going through something or will or have already, like, you can get out of it and, you know, grow from it, you know? And, mm -hmm. um... You're not alone. <laughs> like yeah. I, I've I've gone through it, and I'm sure every single person on earth has gone through something. So um, I really want to inspire people to know that they don't have to depend on other people to, you know, do things for them or wait around for things other people to make things happen. Like you know, you can go after it and get it, and no matter what happens, you know, you can be your own redemption. Mm -hmm. How did the tour with Miley Cyrus and Fifth Harmony come about? <laughs> that was awesome. That was a summer show I did. Um, I think in Boston. Oh, okay. Um, or Baltimore. Yeah. It was one of the one of the bees. But it was so fun. It was. I mean, it was amazing. Um, it was one of my first summer shows I ever did too, and it was like I think my biggest one I've done so far, which was super fun. And there, I got to watch their sets afterwards, which was, which was also amazing, of mm -hmm. course. And so, very grateful that I got to be included with such an amazing lineup yeah. of artists. Yeah. And you were also on the t uh, Today Show. Yeah, I was. That was super fun. It was <laughs> such was a great that? time. Um, that was right after I released my first album, This Is Me, so three years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that her first time, like, 
performing. It was my first on TV performance. TV, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, like a bigger TV performance. Yeah, it was my first one. It was yeah. so fun and like crazy. How, how does that real. compare to like the stadium performances? Like, is the whole setup different? <laughs> or how do you describe it? Um, yeah, it definitely is different. I mean, it's super early, first of all. Like, you have the call time is like 3 a.m. or like something like nuts. And then you go on at like 5 a.m. So it's definitely like interesting because usually this, the summer shows and everything are like later in the day mm -hmm. um, so that's the first thing that's very different um, other thing too is I mean the t today show is like super I mean they're both super like this run yeah. but um, yeah, the other one's more of like a concert feel with like an audience mm -hmm. and today's show obviously is just you know you're performing the camera and everything which is I mean they're both amazing in their own way so there's not really a way to compare the two. How about the stadium? Do you have to like project a different way to like TV or you sing um, the same way? No, I sing the same way usually. Yeah. Um, yeah, that part I usually keep the same. A lot of times with the choreography and different, you'll do different things for that to, you know, camera blocking versus, you know, um, at like a summer show like that, like it's more of a concert. So you just kind of like, you perform outward, we're more like TV, I feel like it's a little bit more intimate, mm -hmm. so you kind of play to camera a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so a little bit different, but I I mean, generally still the same kind of performance. I give it my all every single time. So. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> How would you say your music has changed compared to the early songs you made? Um, I would definitely say it's matured a lot, um, also just growing, and also my past music, I mean, my past album that I did, my last one was when I was 13, and now I'm 16 going on 17, so obviously I've grown a lot and I have different you know, perspectives on situations, um, new experiences that I want to put into my music and talk about. Um, so yeah, so a lot. Yeah. <laughs> How else would you say you've grown as a person compared to when you were younger? I just think I'm more aware and also just more, I feel like I've always been confident with my music and like, um, but I feel like more so I've become more confident when it comes to just owning who I am, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's just with getting older too, like, um, you know, and becoming just like strong, like this is my vision and this is right, like this is who I am rather than, you know, this is my vision, but like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, I've just learned to really tr trust my instinct and to, and to really, you know, um, give myself the benefit of the doubt, I guess, you know yeah. what I mean? And, um, you know, believe in myself, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say have been your biggest challenges so far in life? Um, biggest challenges. I think definitely starting at a young age in music with like career wise, like proving myself to people. I feel like mm -hmm. I've always kind of been, um, obviously with anybody like uh, up and coming artists, you know, the underdogs. So like, you know, proving myself to people and really showing people that I really am like a, a musician, musician. Like I play like drums and guitar and piano and I like write all my own stuff and, um, I'm just super involved with every little thing. And so, um, I feel like the biggest challenge is just having people become aware of like, you know, me and my music and my passion and love for it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's probably the main like career challenge. Mm -hmm. I would say. <laughs> life challenge, yeah, I just feel challenge. like life is just like, <laughs> every day there's something to learn from or go through. So just life, life is the biggest life challenge. <laughs> <laughs> what does love mean to you? Love? Yeah. Love? Like romantic love? Up to you, any type. Hmm. I think love is just like happiness and like mm -hmm. your passion. Like I'm very like about like being in tune to like your soul and I just feel like love is like to me like music is like I can't live without it. Like that is love. Like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like whatever brings you happiness and you feel comfortable and you just feel like it's right. That's probably love. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. What do you want to be remembered for? That's a really good question. I want to be remembered for first and foremost being a good role model mm -hmm. to everybody. I, it's really important to me, and I, with everything that I do, like I always, you know, I mean, I was young when I started, and I like had definitely had the people that I looked up to, and I really, I like love being somebody that people can look up to, and parents can be like, like my kid like loves yours, and be like proud. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And so that's super important to me to always be just a good role model, and I really want to be remembered for that, and also just as like like a badass performer and like I just like to me like that like that is what I love to perform so much like that is I feel like one of the main things for sure of like like my artistry and who I am as an artist um so I feel like that I would just love to be 
known as like known around for just being a great performer and overall like musician and entertainer. Like I think Bruno Mars and Beyonce are amazing, mm -hmm. and I, I definitely want to be one of the greats. And you know, I I, I want to be remembered for my music and yeah. all that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, this but I love this. Thank you so much. Oh my God, ending with a dance too. <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>